In this video, we're going to explore the historic city of Tampa, which includes Ybor City, the Henry B. Plant Museum, and so much more. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. I tried adapting the new Sony 4K action camera to my drone with mixed results. Right now it is behaving okay as we fly over the bayou next to the St. Petersburg Madeira Beach KOA. The first bridge down there, that's the Pinellas Trail. And here we're looking towards Madeira Beach and if I had a zoom lens, I could probably show you John's Pass Boardwalk. See what I said about the mixed results? Sometimes I get this weird vibration when I throttle up. I think I'm gonna have to get that Mavic after all. Well, tomorrow is moving day and we'll be sad to leave. Morning! Today we are going to Tampa. Wait, I forgot the camera. across Tampa Bay on the Howard Franklin Bridge. And that's downtown Tampa to the right. Today we are staying at the Super Rally at the Florida State Fairgrounds where the RV show is going to take place. So let's check in and get situated. By the way, we are only getting electrical service here, so we'll have to make very judicious use of our water for the next few days. Just take a look at how many big rigs are here. This is incredible, most of them diesel pushers, and we have our little trailer. Well, as you can see, it is like the blind leading the blind to get our dwarf parked among all these giants, but eventually we get situated. Yes, we are at the rally. We hang out at the RV show, which happens to be extremely crowded on senior day. It is noon, so let's make some Cuban coffee for good measure. And... Let's go explore a little bit, you know, take a quick tour to get our lay of the land and to see the places we'll be visiting during the next couple of days. First, let's check out Ybor City, which is a historic district founded in the 1880s by Vicente Martinez Ybor and other cigar manufacturers, and back then it was populated by immigrants mainly from Cuba, Spain and Italy. This was probably the original Little Havana or Little Madrid or Little Italy. And it is very likely the birthplace of the famed Cuban sandwich. We'll revisit Ybor City later in the week. We continue by the port of Tampa, at the aquarium, at Channel Side, passing by downtown. We cross the Hillsborough River here and drive on the picturesque Bayshore Boulevard, which holds the record as the world's longest sidewalk. In an effort to avoid the traffic jam, we stumble upon the Hyde Park Historic District here, where the famous Burns Steakhouse is located. Here we got stuck in traffic again. Apparently everybody had the same idea. 
The neighborhood dates back to the late 1800s as well. This white building to the left is actually the famous Burns Steakhouse. It doesn't quite look like much from the outside, but we've been there before and it is quite an experience if you want to splurge one night. We continue south on Bayshore Boulevard. And here we are at Ballast Point Park. From the pier, you get this fantastic view of the bay and downtown Tampa across the bay. Let's return, going north on Bayshore Boulevard, as the sunset reflects off one of the downtown buildings. Very pretty. We have dinner at the Wing House, which is kind of like a Hooters knockoff, and the chicken wings are equally great. Good morning. We are literally surrounded by giants. After spending the morning at the RV show, we have worked up an appetite. So we are going to go to the oldest continuously operating restaurant in Florida. The oldest Spanish restaurant in the United States and one of the largest in the world. Yes. We're going to the iconic Colombia in Ybor City. The restaurant is, as usual, very busy. They have a great selection of Spanish wines, but today we are opting for the Cava Sangria, which is made with sparkling white wine, a brandy, orange liqueur, and citrus juices. Mm, very refreshing. And they make it right by your table. We're also gonna have the Spanish paella, which is nearly perfect, if I may say so myself. As you can see, you can get lost in this place. It is so big. We are going to continue exploring Ybor City a little bit here, which is almost like a pilgrimage for those of us of Cuban descent. This area was like the cradle of the Cuban independence movement back in the late 1800s. Hmm, and this seems to be part of the Colombia as well.
Next, we are going to hop on the Tico Line streetcar, which takes you from here to downtown and back. It is $2.50 one way and $5 for the whole day. And at the beginning, we have the car all to ourselves. And by the way, we have the crankiest conductor. She's not having a good day. We pass by the Port of Tampa on our way to downtown, as well as the Florida Aquarium. The streetcar is a nice, quirky mode of transportation between Ybor City and downtown and vice versa, but I don't know if I would call it a tourist attraction unto itself. I mean, it is fine, but don't expect like a guided tour or, or the greatest of views. We are back in Ybor City, here by the Jose Marti Park, and now we are going to visit uh, some of the historic sites. Here's the Church of Scientology. The site of Ybor City's first fire station. Maybe the oldest fire station? Could be. And here it is, Parque Amigos de José Martí. José Martí was the Cuban national hero during the War of Independence from Spain. This park was actually donated to Cuba before the communist revolution, and it remains the property of the Republic of Cuba to this day. It contains soil from all the six provinces of the island at the time, and the statue of José Martí in the center. Normally you can go inside and explore, but it closes very early at 1.30 pm, and that's that. It was actually around here that Jose Marti gathered with the Cuban immigrants back then, many of whom worked in the tobacco industry, to gather funds and support for the cause of the island's independence. The current building here dates back to 1917, and it replaces an earlier structure that actually burned down. Something weird, it feel, feels odd. Like this uh, part of the city seems kind of depressed, like a lot of businesses are out of business and there's hardly anybody on the street. Here's the Don Vicente de Ibor Inn, built in 1895 by Vicente Ibor himself, the founder of Ibor City. Even the great uh, Don Vicente de Ibor Hotel is out of business. Check it out. It's gone. Historic Inn. Okay, I think we've had enough Ybor City for one day, don't you think? Check it out, the nearly deserted Tampa Bay Brewing Company. I actually wanted to come here, have a beer. These for lease signs are a very common sight in the area. And why did the chicken cross the road?
gem of Spanish restaurants. Yeah, we actually left the car at the Colombia parking lot. It's still there. It's a brand new day as we continue exploring the city of Tampa. We are going to have lunch at this place called Yuleili. I think that's how it's pronounced. It is supposed to be native Floridian food and a brewery too. I take 275 the We have of course one of the local brews, the alligator hush puppies, a Juan Snapper and Gouda Grouper, and the Key West Key Lime Stack. All the food is very original, very delicious. Let's walk outside. This right here is the Waterworks Park. And here we spot some wildlife at the Hillsborough River. It is actually quite a nice park, very pleasant. Let's go a little further south on the riverfront towards downtown. We park at the Performing Arts Center and go for a stroll. Across the river, we can see the University of Tampa, formerly the Tampa Bay Hotel, as we walk along the river walk. Walk across the bridge, over the Hillsborough River, towards the Henry B. Plant Park. This sculpture at the center of the park is called Sticks of Fire. This magnificent building is the University of Tampa's Plant Hall, originally the Tampa Bay Hotel. The Henry B. Plant Museum is located on the south wing, and that's where we're going next. It was built by the aforementioned Henry B. Plant, a developer and railroad builder. Can you imagine this place at the turn of the century? Well, it is referred to as Florida's first magic kingdom. Imagine that. We take this self-guided tour of the museum, which highlights certain areas of the original lavish hotel. Here's an old guest book and tons of artifacts and memorabilia. Here we are in the reading and writing room. This set of paintings was originally located in the music room, 
which we'll see in a little bit when we visit the university side. The one on the left represents wine, the middle, women, and the one on the right, song. The following room highlights uh, women and some of their pastimes uh, during the time period. And this is the original carpet of the hotel, by the way. There's also an exhibit uh, covering the importance of the hotel and the city of Tampa during the Spanish-American War. All these vases in this room were originally located throughout the gardens, brought from Asia by Plant and his wife themselves. Let's check out some of the guest rooms. Go next door to the actual plant hall of the university. Here we can see the elevator, the interior constructed with Cuban mahogany. It originally functioned hydraulically, and it is thought to be the oldest passenger elevator in Florida. And here's the music room that I mentioned before, with a replica of the paintings representing wine, women and song. Okay, it is time to continue. It is a magnificent building, isn't it? It is such a beautiful day here in Tampa. Last day here at the rally. Uh, we actually have until tomorrow, but we're gonna pull out today around noonish, I'd say. Uh, the problem is our 
gray and black water tanks with full and our fresh water tank with empty and uh, I know that's not accurate but it's very unnerving not to know exactly how much you have left okay we're pulling out tonight we're going to stay at the Brighton Seminole campground just west of Lake Okeechobee about halfway home seems to be a brand new place Let me show you what we are about to encounter here on I-4. Some thought it was an eyesore. Some will mourn its loss. It is the Airstream Ranch. Just a few days after this video was shot, this classic American roadside attraction was demolished. Gone. Forever. And I just realized I forgot to put on my towing mirrors, so let's stop here for a second and do that. Okay, we've made it. It is kind of a weird setup. It looks like a back inside, but the hookups are on the wrong side, so. <laughs> I'm going to the pool. By the way, there's no cell coverage, at, at least not AT&T, but the campground Wi-Fi is excellent. And with that, another day comes to an end. Tomorrow, we go back to Miami. All good things come to an end. But before you go, if you liked it, do me a solid and give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, remember to subscribe if you haven't and check out my other videos. You can also visit the blog at travelingrobert.com, join the mailing list and follow me on social media at travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding with my RV.